All right, let's be totally clear here. Most superheroes live in mythical worlds that are not bound by the physical laws that govern our planet. But you and me, we live on Earth. So if we want to become a superhero, we're going to have to, well, first of all, abide by those rules and learn about the science that's involved in all of this. Well, we're going to take a little bit of advice from the modern and traditional worlds of archery. You need a good outfit, you need the right arrows, and you need a good bow. Now, I'll start with the outfit. Now, plain and simple, the outfit is really important because you got to look cool. Now, to get my point across, here are some of the more famous ones. You've got Hawkeye, Katniss, the Green Arrow, Robin Hood, the Archer from Clash of Clans, Merida the Brave, Legolas, Abigail Whistler, and Rambo. Now, just for reference, modern archers either look like this, which is the Olympian, or this, which is the bow hunter. All right, now for us, we're gonna just outfit our own exemplary archer with, you know, our little spin on things. Now the only real keys are a few accessories. The first is an arm guard, and this is actually there to keep the string from either hitting your arm or, you know, your clothes and stuff getting in the way. And the next would be something like this, finger gloves. Now while a superhero might be able to get off a few shots without this, real archers actually use them, either finger tabs, gloves like this, or release aids, just so they have the best accuracy. And for your arrows, don't forget your quiver. Now onto the arrows. Now there are lots of different types of arrows, from wooden ones to aluminum and carbon ones. Now the arrow can be made of anything, but archers choose ones that flex perfectly with their bow. Now the stiffness of an arrow shaft is known as its spine. An arrow that bends less is said to have more spine, and getting it right is key. Now the arrow tips are also really important. There's a few main types. There are fixed blades, which come in many shapes and sizes, and retractable blades, which deploy on impact. So, good for dragons. Yes, in fact, and I'll tell you why. See, arrows, unlike bullets, will go through a couple things, like sandbags and bulletproof armor. So, the scaly armor of a dragon, you're gonna want an arrow. All right, now let's talk about bows. Now, the bows here might just be the most misunderstood part of designing a superhero. Now, they've been around a long time, probably about 20,000 years ago. And long bows were first, then various crossbows, recurves, and in 1969, the compound bow was invented. And this was a really big invention. So for comparison, we're gonna compare the compound bow versus the more traditional recurves. Recurves. The recurve bow differs from a longbow in that the limbs are bent away at the ends. This allowed archers to achieve the arrow speeds of a much longer bow with a much smaller package. Speed shooters use a bow like this, meaning that you can get a lot of arrows off very quickly. Compounds. Now you tailor a compound specifically to yourself. And measuring the draw length, you aim to put a kisser button in the corner of your mouth. You look through a peephole, through a sight, and you aim it on the target. Now there's a high degree of accuracy doing this, plus the cams on the end are designed to allow you to essentially drop the weight at full draw. Now that allows you to hold it to aim for long periods of time, like if a dragon or a wild animal is sneaking through the bush in front of you. And finally, one of the big differences between these two is how the force is actually applied to the arrow as they're shot. But I don't think it's really easy to understand unless we take these out into the field and actually show you. This is a hanging scale. Now I can mount it on a bow on a hook like this and it'll tell me how much force is needed throughout the entire draw length as I pull it down. Now what I want you to notice is that a recurve will look like this. The weight increases steadily as I pull it down, basically more per inch throughout the entire draw length. Now a compound bow looks like this. Notice how the force draw curve looks very different to that of the recurve. The force is somewhat the same in the middle draw lengths. And then look what happens. There is a let off at the end. 15 pounds of force right here. And you could hold that for a long time. Now let's look at the total potential energy of the bow, which is determined by the area under the curve. You see, the more area, the more potential energy. In this case, with a similar poundage of about 52 pounds, this compound bow can deliver quite a bit more energy to the arrow. Pretty cool, huh? So there you go. That is some of the science involved in archery. If you're into this whole archery thing, I encourage you to go to archery360.com. That's a really great resource for everything archery related. Also, FYI, we're creating more videos on archery, so I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. Stay tuned, we're gonna be putting out more. It's, that means click right down there, right? All right, we'll see you in another video. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have a little bit of a competition. Uh, Hazen here from Survive the Tribe. Uh, hey, hi. He's gonna, show us, he's gonna show us the traditional type bows. He's got a recurve 
and I've got a compound, and we're gonna see who can get closest to the target um, in you know a couple rounds. So let's have some fun. Bullseye. Look at that.